Hello, my name's Michael Turvo and I'm the project officer for our Citizens for Refuge Ecology program or the care camps. We are at our beautiful nature refuge, Koala Crossing, on Yuggera country in southeast Queensland. This weekend, we are here for Bird Bivouac. We've done a series of activities. We've focused on bioacoustics, peeking into some of our nest boxes that we have on the property, as well as waking up on those very cold, frosty mornings and doing some bird surveys. My name is Hugh Possingham. I'm the Queensland Chief Scientist. As the availability of bird books has become common, bird apps and recording apps like eBird and Bird Data, uh, devices that tell you what the calls are like, and also lots of photographers and much easier to use digital photography. People can now more quickly identify everything. Their data is very accurate. It is the vast majority of data that we use to make now statements about the health of Australia's ecosystems. It's citizen science data. Of course, once people start identifying things, they start asking more and more questions like, where do species live? What do they eat? What do they do? Why are they here now? Why aren't they here in the summer? And so forth. Most people want to see the birds, so I'm trying to look for opportunities where the sun's behind us, we're in an open space and there's some birds about 10 or 15 metres away, which is about the optimal positioning. I'm also conscious that to tell people that bird watching isn't just about binoculars, see a bird, look in the book, it's about listening to birds. In fact, most of the data I collect is by call. So I, I want people to understand that in fact, if you want to progress in bird watching, it's about listening to them. And then also, you don't always need your binoculars. Shape, movement and call are in fact the way that experienced bird watchers identify things. I'm Michael Maggs, uh, one of the founders of Frontier Labs, and we make bioacoustic recorders, which are really excellent tools for listening to bird life and monitoring biodiversity. And I was just really excited to be a, a part of it and to help share uh, and, and teach some people who haven't had an experience with bioacoustics. And we could look at, uh, say, an hour's worth of recordings uh, in, in you know, a few seconds or a minute and find out a lot of information that you wouldn't have the, you know, the, the stamina to do if you had to sit there for an hour uh, and you know, that was running all night and in the morning and different uh, times of the day. So it's a really fun tool. People use our recorders for a number of different reasons. So some people might be interested in uh, looking for a really rare or endangered uh, species. Uh, some people are doing uh, larger long-term biodiversity studies. Uh, so you might be recording a lot of different things and analyzing the sounds to find out what's living there and how that's changing over the time. We've seen some awesome species of many different biodiversity groups, but especially our birds, and we've had an absolutely wonderful time. Thank you so much to our brilliant team of amazing citizen scientists for braving the very cold and frosty weather to come out this weekend and survey the birds on Koala Crossing.